फ्रेंड्स दिस इज माय सेकंड इंस्टॉलमेंट ऑफ आई एम द लास्ट ऑफ कोर्स ऑन डार्विन्स डे आई सेड इन द आफ्टरनून वन दैट आई विल स्पीक अबाउट माय बुक्स कलेक्शन अबाउट डार्विन एंड एवोल्यूशन एंड अबाउट लाइफ साइंसेस इन जनरल सो ओरिजिन ऑफ स्पीशीज वी विल एंड विथ वी वी ऑलवेज टॉक अबाउट ओरिजिन ऑफ स्पीशीज पॉसिबली because of its fame but first i will tell you about this book called darwin it had a different it was published by a different publisher by a different name this is by this is by penguin and it is by desmond and moor at adrian desmond and james moor they are bio historians it is one of the most racy most beautiful most fascinating book about evolution not really about evolution about the life of charles darwin and you will actually learn a lot of evolution it has a lot of dramatic uh, passages here and you will see the high drama of uh, charles darwin's life so this is a book i would really recommend for anyone interested in the life sciences and who are going to study the life sciences must have a look into this book uh, any good library should be having this book any good library of uh, <laughs> biology and this is a very amazing book called invention of nature this is a book on the life of alexander von humboldt and he was the first to go and explore south america on his own and that is why it's called the invention of nature this book and his travels actually had made many naturalists go in search of the you know this into the amazon rain forest and start trying to search exotic animals and plants and darwin himself was very influenced by this and this book also has a lot about darwin at the end and uh, written by andrea wolf and published by john and more and john and more is the publisher who also published the origin of the species so this is a very interesting book which i so this shelf that you see here is essentially all biology uh, you might say what the, what is the mathematician doing with biology books but this is just for, as a hobby as i and it, and, and there is a personal link as to why i the personal story which i don't want to tell is too personal to be told on camera why 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 i want to study life why i want to study charles darwin here is a book which has got the pulitzer prize called the beak of the finch and this book the beak of the finch you can actually see the bird here of the galapagos island written by jonathan winer it traces the life and the work of a pair of biologists peter and rosemary grant husband wife team who actually for 30 years looked at a particular population of birds in a small island called daphne major in the galapagos archipelago and they actually showed that in real time natural selection happening and evolution happening and a new species forming coming to being among the other great scientific biographies of charles darwin not by two by professor janet brown who was an english uh, prof, uh, lady who was a big is a he by historical history biological historian he was he is a biologist and a biohistorian and was in harvard medical school uh, and this is her first volume charles darwin voyaging and the second is called the power of place because after darwin came back from that voyage he never left the shores of england so he is he used his own house as his at the garden as his experimental place as i told in the in you in the afternoon right so these are two very important scholarly books and many scholars say that this is one of the most uh, or best book uh, about charles darwin because it is a lot of information but i would always consider the book of uh, uh, by desmond and moore that really pulls you into the drama of evolution so Darwin and Botany was a book which I had shown in the morning. I had already shown this book, so I will not get into this book. One of the latest books about Charles Darwin was by a philosopher of biology. Biology also has a part called subject called philo philosophy of biology by Michael Ruse. Unfortunately, passed away just after this book was published. 
So this is a history of evolution. This book has a lot of history. Some issue about philosophical issues, but largely about history and the development of evolutionary biology from Darwin's time to now. And why these ideas are very important and how strong the evidence is in favor of uh, evolution. So that is uh, a very important, uh, this is a very important contribution. Unfortunately, he is no more with us. This book written by Prashanta Chakraborty. So those who are Bengalis would understand that this is a Bengali name, but he teaches in Louisiana State University. And this is a very beautiful book published. It is available in India. It's published by Penguin India, actually, the one I bought. It's a very, very, I can tell you the price also. Now, I think the price would be kind of, I don't know, much cheaper. By the way, I don't know, the paper is not very good for some reason. It gets brittle. But it's a beautifully written book. Anybody can read this book. It's fun to read. And he really shows you what are the things that you have to uh, understand you know, and how much biology you need to understand to know evolution. Actually, you will be surprised that when you un try to understand evolution, it is more, you you, it will be good if you are good in mathematics, your logic is good rather than your biology being very good. And that's a very important point one has to keep in mind because here every step is very, very logical. And here he gives all of the latest developments in that area. And he is interested in the evolution of fishes himself. So there's a lot of fun. This book is written in a very fun way. This is for anyone to read. Here is a book by one of my favorite, uh, Richard Dawkins. Richard, I enjoy Richard Dawkins' book on biology. Uh, I'm not uh, so very keen on his uh, militant atheism, but uh, though that is sometimes required, but I, I'm not very keen on that. But his evolutionary writings are just fantastic. Just fantastic. The way he describes science, the way he describes phenomena of biology is just, just too good. So this this uh, uh, book, I mean this De De Devil's uh, Chaplain comes from a letter Darwin wrote to a friend before he published Origin of the Species, what a book a devil's chaplain may write on the horrible and cruel works of nature. So this is maybe, maybe I have to see the correct comment. What a book a devil's chaplain might write on the clumsy, wasteful, blundering, low and horridly cruel works of nature. One has to realize when you study evolution, you realize that nature is truly cruel. And those who are worried about nature's nature not being cruel and very nice to us, please think of the children suffering cancer in the pediatric cancer ward. Please think of them. And you, you will realize what I am trying to say. So there is a lot of, lot of books here, but let me go back to another collection on this side. Here is the one you can say I have gifted myself on this Darwin day. Evolution by the Modern Synthesis by Julian Huxley. Julian Huxley is the grandson of uh, Thomas Henry Huxley, who was actually fighting with the church in favor of Darwin and, and others and other, trying to convince other scientists of the importance of what Charles Darwin had written in Origin of Species. And uh, Huxley uh, uh, coined the term agnostic means uh, taking a position where you are not really worried really about religious issues in science, but you are re really interested about the natural way, trying to describe nature through the lens of natural explanations. And this book is about the role of genetics in explaining evolution. And here you will see a huge role played by modern mathematicians and statisticians. And that is the fun part of it and that is what I want to show you. Fossils play a very important role in evolution. They are one of the greatest evidences that evolution is true. And two good books about fossils, for example, here is uh, the story of life in 25 fossils by Donald Prothero, who himself is a great, great uh, paleontologist and uh, who are uh, a paleobiologist. So he 
has written a lot of books on evolution and these books are just fabulous with a lot of pictures and a uh, lot of uh, you, you can see this I can show you some pictures here and you can see from the beginning possibly a dinosaur fossil here and the book Donald R. Prothero he has also written another book The Story of Evolution in 25 Discoveries. A book which is tremendously important, tremendously important in the modern uh, synthesis is written by Ronald Fisher. Anybody who has written, studied statistics knows the name of Ronald A. Fisher. All your modern hypothesis testing and all these ideas are coming from Fisher. All these ideas of inference and this Fisher information, Fisher score, a lot of things, parametric estimation, these ideas come from Fisher. And Fisher had used statistics to understand natural selection. But second part of the book is not very interesting because he gets into these racial issues and uh, was supporting eugenics, the idea which was later used by Hitler to hit against the Jews, which was obviously not a very good thing. So now, at the end, we come back to evolution's greatest text, possibly the one by Charles Darwin, the origin of the species. One, it is not the only book. Charles Darwin has written, as I told you, many books on the botanical aspects on botany. See, all this while, while he was working on plants, as I said in the afternoon, he was essentially trying to gather evidence for his theory, for what he wrote in the Origin of Species. So here I have the Origin of Species first edition, where he is absolutely the best version of the Origin because he wrote straight directly without much of an ado. He didn't have to answer any critic. Here he calls this a very long, one long argument in favor of evolution. So Penguin republished this book. So this one is a very good one. This one is a second edition of the book. I will not tell you what are the subtle differences. Here there were several criticisms which came from the first edition and he was trying to address those criticisms in this book. And it, it is, uh, you see it's written Natural History Museum. It, it tried to keep the cover of the original book. And this National Natural History Museum is in UK. And it is just opposite Imperial College in London. It's a beautiful museum and I think everybody who goes to London, if you're interested in science, should visit it. Its collection of birds is just amazing. And there's a section where of fossils, where you see the fossils collected by Darwin himself. And there's a beautiful statue of Darwin. It's, and also a statue of, the, of Alfred Russell Wallace. So um, this is the second edition of the Origin of the Species. So where he tried also to talk about uh, tried to address some of these criticisms. This is the greatness of Charles Darwin. Instead of fighting, getting into a state of uh, argument with people unnecessarily and be becoming a rebel to the society, like Michael Ruse has written, the Charles Darwin is no rebel but a revolutionary. He simply, if you have an argument, if you criticize him, he will look into your argument and very politely answer you back and he would give a scientific answer to your argument. There are many cases, his, his, his research, his original research in geology, several of them were found to be wrong. And when he was pointed out with new evidence, he very humbly accepted that yes, he had made a mistake. And that is the greatness of a great scientist. Here is a book, The Readable Darwin. So here his language, his Victorian language has been made simpler with a lot more explanations and more photographs. Photographs are not a part of the real origin but this is based on the sixth and the last edition of the origin of the species so a lot of pages are there on him trying to answer criticisms and trying to write a bit about historical uh, facts where people have already known had some give ideas about natural selection so with this I would like to basically end, but before I end, I want to show you a kind of an additional bonus book. 
This book, Darwin's Ghost in Search of the First Evolutionist, is written by Rebecca Scott. Rebecca Scott is a professor of English, was a professor of English at Norwich, and she took a voluntary retirement. But also at the same time, she has a great hold on evolutionary biology. See, these two things are very different to us. Oh, you study biology. In India, we say we study biology. Oh, you can't study English. But there you can do that. It is her restriction in her house by her grandfather and her, originally her parents to know about Charles Darwin that pushed her to know more about Darwin through her school library. And she says in this book that she, she still feels a sense of fear and a sense of excitement when he walks, she walks into the library towards the books which towards the places which houses books on evolution and Charles Darwin. So this is a beautiful book written about people who had tried to think about life, about evolution, about the nature of life much before Darwin. So here you there, uh, he, she writes about uh, people like Aristotle. He starts with Aristotle. He talks, she talks about Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, there was somebody uh, called uh, uh, somebody in Baghdad, and there were many, many other people. And uh, I'm actually reading this book, which is just fantastic. I mean, she, he, and she ends with Alfred Russell Wallace. She talks about Robert Grant, who was Darwin's teacher uh, in uh, Darwin's teacher in Edinburgh, who first gave Darwin this, uh, uh, gave a, first taught Darwin to argue rather than accept everything. He, he was person who was fav in favor of Lamarck's version of evolution. So Lamarck's version of evolution now it is discredited because now it has been shown that evolution is not having any goal as such. That it is not being geared to have people, have us on the planet. Uh, so, but this book is very good because it really brings out the history of evolutionary thinking that even Aristotle was trying to understand the relationship between animals. So people would like to say, oh, Charles Darwin is possibly the greatest biologist, but some people still talk about Aristotle being the first. So with this, our celebration comes to an end and hoping that this day you would try to look at science as one of the greatest inventions of humankind, which has taken us forward like no other thing. And I hope those who love science would keep their spirit up and keep their scientific temper up, think rationally, go by evidence-based reasoning. And for mathematicians, you know, mathematicians enter everywhere, whether it is biology, physics, chemistry, doesn't matter, mathematicians are everywhere. So I remember a school teacher of mine whom I have spoken in my uh, YouTube video, How I Learned Maths, my school teacher who actually gave me the joy of knowing, uh, learning mathematics, who really taught me maths and made me fall in love with mathematics. He used to tell one thing, uh, he used to tell it in Bengali, so I will translate it. It means a person who understands mathematics will also understand other subjects. And with this, I say a goodbye to you and thank you for bearing with me and a happy Darwin day once again. Thank you.